The survival horror genre as one of the biggest subcategories of the horror genre hosts new titles every day. But how did the genre evolve to get to where it is today? What effects did the building of this genre fear? In this video, we will look at some of the games and effects that are effective in the formation of survival horror, and together we will once again walk the path of drawing the final face of survival horror. If we want to find the first game that follows the structure of the survival horror genre, we have to get into the time machine and go back decades. February 1981 was the month when the survival horror genre was first smashed into the world of video games as Haunted House. The game was released for the Atari 2600 console and showcased certain gameplay mechanisms that became vital to the survival horror genre decades later. The game was created by James Andreessen and had a very simple but unique structure. In this game, as the name implies, you live in the captured house of Zachary Graves and you have to collect items scattered in this house. Along the way, enemies and evil creatures like Ghost of Zachary Graves bats and spiders try to stop you. The game was dark and you needed to light matches to find the items you were looking for. If you entered a room where one of the monsters was present, your match would be extinguished. The player also had a magic wand that acted as a protector against enemies. It underpinned one of the most important features of the genre, limiting the amount of items you can carry. The player was only able to carry one item, including his cane, so if he wanted to pick up another item during the game, he had to pass through his cane and risk the way. Haunted House has a very good AI than its time, so that if you played the game in higher difficulty levels, enemies and monsters would be able to pass through the doors, making it much harder for the player. The overall structure and map of the house also changed, which increased the value of the multiplied experience and multiplied the challenge of the experience each time. Finally, Haunted House is a highly respected and important title, not only in the history of survival fear, but also in the entire history of the horror genre in the gaming industry, which was able to lay the foundation for a potential building. This work provided a general pattern for posterity to nurture and transform it into something larger and more ambitious. Sweet Home by Capcom was released to Famicom only in Japan about eight years after Haunted House, in 1989, and for this reason many people don't even know it. But it is one of the most influential titles, not only in the survival horror genre and the identity of the Resident Evil franchise, but throughout the history of the horror genre. The overall concept of the game revolves around a group of five researchers who come to the painter's mansion to investigate some of the paintings of the late Mamiya Ichiru, but soon realize that the painter's spirit has trapped them in the mansion and must now work together to find a way out of it. Sweet Home, while the work of 1989, but has a lot of depth in its various parts, especially its story, so that the player will find different information stories in different formats, including text, which in fact describe the background events and even the history of the house and its previous events to the player. It should be noted that this is an RPG based on the horror genre that replaced new parts of this great puzzle of survival horror. The overall gameplay structure was a fully RPG structure that utilizes survival mechanisms. Each of the five characters in the game has their own proprietary capabilities and allows them to be upgraded to the player. The player finds ammunition and various items during the experience and has limited inventory. It should be noted that health items were also rarely found, and therefore the player should always walk in the environment with logical strategy and planning. Another awesome feature of Sweet Home, which we see today modeling, is the death of characters permanently. If one of your five team members dies during the game, you will no longer have access to him or her abilities. This mechanism alone demonstrated a high degree of innovation for the title to foster survival in the horror genre. Today, many horror titles such as Song of Horror have been modeled on this mechanism. This title is also very good in the field of designing its enemies and making space, and even in this period of the gaming industry, it can be enjoyed and even felt the heaviness of its atmosphere. If you noticed, many of the features of this game are very similar to the first Resident Evil version, and the reason for that was the fundamental innovations of this title in drawing the final role of the horror genre, which was eventually completed by RE and will be more detailed in the following.
But now it's time to get out of the house of Mamiya Ichiru and move on to our next destination. The franchise I'm going to talk about right now is the one where the first version was the first 3D survival horror game, and that's why it even registered itself in Guinness. It has been able to make fundamental changes and innovations in the horror genre in 3D format and officially set a solid model for the first Resident Evil release, but unfortunately, it quickly fell to the ground as quickly as it succeeded. Alone in the Dark The first Alone in the Dark was one of the most influential titles in the genre because it laid the foundation for many of the standards of survival fear in a 3D world. While many call Resident Evil the father of the genre, it was Alone in the Dark that broadly established the genre's standards. The first version of the series is set in the 1920s and revolves around Edward Carnby and Emily Hartwood. Edward has a mission to visit the late Jeremy Hartwood's mansion and examine his piano. On the other hand, the artist's daughter, Emily, believes that her father has hidden his suicide letter on his piano, and so she goes to his father's estate to find it. While the game's overall storytelling was a very standard narrative, what made it unique was its experience as two characters and the ability to choose between Emily and Edward, who later find a way to Resident Evil. Other features include challenging puzzles that handled the player's brain well, limited ammunition and health items, and a good variety of monsters. The game could well have been a heavy environment and atmosphere to his mysterious feeling under the skin of the player and attractive methods to scare the player too. Also, the proper variety of monsters and enemies in terms of their specific characteristics made the player well-pressed. For example, some enemies were completely immortal, and you could only use your ammunition to stop them for a while, so the player in stressful situations had to choose between the easy way to use ammunition and the hard way that escaped and dodged enemy attacks. And both of these choices might have had serious consequences have. If you've noticed it so far, this title has also innovated many of the features of the first Resident Evil in 3D format, but unfortunately this innovation and a fascinating horror experience didn't continue in future versions. The second and third versions of the franchise were gameplay-focused action games, a relatively superficial story and a normal atmospheric style that didn't look like the first Alone in the Dark game. The main reason for this was the separation of many of the creators and the team behind the work, and we all know what a fatal blow it can be to a fledgling franchise. After the not-so-happy ending of the original infograms, but this success was achieved with the next release, it was marred again. I think that's enough about this franchise. However, despite the franchise's downfall, the first version still registered alone in the dark as one of the founders of survival horror and no failure can breach that. We look forward to the day when we witness the powerful return of this unfortunate franchise. Sometimes I think Clock Tower was such a weird franchise and I feel sad right away because I know we'll probably never see a new title. The late 1990s our point and click titles were very popular and there were a lot of horror works in this genre that I mentioned earlier in some other videos, but Clock Tower was different from many of them. Strange combination of survival, atmosphere, and atmospheric mechanisms with point-and-click gameplay brings an enjoyable experience. The first version of the Clock Tower franchise, sometimes known as Clock Tower The First Fear, was initially released in Japan in 1995 only for Famicom, but after a while, the creators saw the rapid growth of the PlayStation 1 and decided to make Sony's new console their next game, so Clock Tower, which was actually the second installment in the franchise, was released on 13th December 1996 for the PS1, but here is the 1995 version we talk about. Unlike Alone in the Dark series, the original Clock Tower structure focused entirely on avoiding fights and chases, and the mechanics and features of the game were designed around the same theme. In the first version, you played Jennifer Simpson, a young girl trapped in the mansion in Norway, looking for a way out of it and escaping Scissorman. Unlike many of the horrors of that period, the title focused not on monsters and strange creatures, but on a more realistic scenario, modeled more on slasher films of the time, which was a very interesting approach at the time. 
The original version of the franchise was constantly trying to remind the player that being the main character doesn't mean being powerful, and the only way to survive is to escape and hide. So the player was constantly towing a phobia of confrontation with Scissor Man. Clock Tower also had about nine different endings, which greatly increased the value of its re-experience, as well as a little bit more depth to the story and narrative. After the first release, two years after its release, Clock Tower 2 was released in Japan on March 12, 1998, and in October 1999 in the US, and despite maintaining its point-and-click structure, it didn't perform as well as its predecessor. Shortly after the release of the game, its developer Human Entertainment was shut down for good, and the game was licensed by Sunsoft, a creator of titles such as Batman Return of the Joker. With a third version, the studio abandoned the entire franchise structure that was based on point-and-click, and created a completely different title that focused on third-person gameplay and new mechanisms. Of course, it should be noted that the main feature of the franchise, which was the inability of the main character, did not change and was merely improved and underwent changes. Eventually, the title was released with the help of Capcom and was able to perform much better than the second version. The first version of Clock Tower was very special. It may not be considered one of the greatest horror titles, but certainly like many of the titles and franchises we've talked about so far, they were like bricks in the building that eventually became Resident Evil. Clock Tower was a fascinating, scary, and innovative work that I think depicts a very interesting mix in the horror genre and definitely deserves praise. Resident Evil was the focal point of the survival horror genre and the horror genre in general and turned the history of this genre into before and after Resident Evil so that the works that were published before Resident Evil and which we talked about so far were all adding a piece to the pure survival horror building which eventually became Resident Evil and the period after Resident Evil is based on modeling and innovations based on the classic survival horror of R.E., which we'll cover in the next episode. The works and franchises that came after Resident Evil and tried to create a pure survival horror game used a map called Resident Evil, and this continues to this day with games like Tormented Souls. Of course, it should be noted that each of the post-Resident Evil titles had their own unique innovations. Resident Evil not only matured the survival horror genre, but with its own innovations, it has made its overall structure and concept a standard horror genre, so that after 26 years, we still see the release of games that focus on the so-called Resident Evil clone. Resident Evil has been able to imprint and immortalize its name, not only in the horror genre, but also on the body of the gaming industry, by fixing the problems of previous survival horror works, creating a story that is simple but profound and detailed, and the improved implementation of the mechanisms that its fathers had established in the past, and finally its wonderful music and atmosphere. The deep effects of this franchise don't end here, as you all know. Resident Evil 4 is one of the most valuable and important works in the gaming industry, which set new standards for third-person shooter titles, and since then, it has become a blueprint template for creators who wanted to make such works, the most prominent of which can be referred to Dead Space. The franchise has gone through an uphill path and has been constantly testing new approaches. From the online co-op experience of Outbreak titles, in an era when many developers did not risk trial and error in internet-based games to support for up-to-date technologies, like Light Gun with Gun Survivor versions, from entering the on-rail shooter genre with Chronicles to making the seventh version based on a first-person experience that scares the player a lot. Even the action of the franchise, which many refer to as the Dark Years, played a very important role in the evolution of the franchise and getting to where it is today, and personally, I believe it wasn't a bad thing at all. In the end, Resident Evil finished what Haunted House had begun, and transformed the survival horror genre into its fullest and best form. And now it was the beginning of a new era, a period when skillful and enthusiastic creators modeled on RE to create works that could engrave their names with their unique characteristics. Resident Evil was the focal point of the survival horror genre and the horror genre in general, and turned the history of this genre into before and after Resident Evil,
so that the works that were published before Resident Evil and which we talked about so far were all adding a piece to the pure survival horror building, which eventually became Resident Evil and the period after Resident Evil is based on modeling and innovations based on the classic survival horror of RE, which we'll cover in the next episode. The works and franchises that came after Resident Evil and tried to create a pure survival horror game used a map called Resident Evil, and this continues to this day with games like Tormented Souls. Of course, it should be noted that each of the post-Resident Evil titles had their own unique innovations. Resident Evil not only matured the survival horror genre, but with its own innovations, it has made its overall structure and concept a standard horror genre, so that after 26 years, we still see the release of games that focus on the so-called Resident Evil clone. One of the reasons I personally love the genre of fear is its unpredictability. Throughout the history of gaming, many skilled and creative game makers have implemented attractive and different ways to scare their audience, each in turn having a significant impact on the growth of the genre. Today we have returned to the past and reviewed the history of the horror genre and how survival was formed in it. Many creators added their works and art like bricks to the genre's building to eventually lead to Resident Evil. But that wasn't the end. Resident Evil was just the beginning of a flood of innovative ideas for creators to build their own works based on its structure and grow the horror of survival. But unfortunately, due to the limited time of the video E, we will be not able to talk about the period of post-Resident Evil in this, and not so in the next episode, we will look at these titles and how the genre will develop.